I'm gonna put a lot of money into the marketing, more than any other agent. I'll do videos, I'll do 3D floor plan, I'll do drone, I'll do every single thing there is to do, right? That way, when the house doesn't sell for what you think it should sell for, I can go, well, it's not me, because you're not gonna go out and get somebody else that's gonna do better marketing. Welcome back to the Garden State Grow Show. Today we have an exciting guest, Kyle Marcel of Remax Revolution of Wall Township by way of Ocean County. Kyle, welcome to the show. Thank welcome. you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me, gentlemen. Hard to believe you could fit this into your calendar, being so busy. Tell us a little bit about yourself and to the audience, tell them what you do. I'm a real estate agent with Remax Revolution, like you said. Uh, been in the game for about seven years. Mm -hmm came from the seaside bartending district what? for a very long time, about 12 years. Um, I had a good friend, her name is Emily, tapped me seven years ago and said, uh, you can't be a bartender forever. Okay. And so uh, I switched my game over to real estate and the rest is history, so yeah. Well, let's go a little further back. <laughs> yep. Where did you grow up? <laughs> I grew up in, one of probably the best towns in New Jersey, Bayville, okay. legendary town. So from Bayville, New Jersey. Where uh, I actually grew up off Serpentine Drive. I don't know. Stop. Did you go to Central? No, I got out of there. Once they started paving the roads, <laughs> yeah. I went to Tom's River. Oh, okay. I, it lost it, it, the whole vibe. Right. And then you became a North guy. Yeah. TR North. TR North. Nice. Yeah. nice Upper nice. echelon. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you feel like your biggest influence was growing up? Like, who'd you look up to? Were you a big sports guy, comedy guy? Um, who'd I look up to? Uh, big time comedy guy, for sure. Chris Farley, one of my early, um, my yeah, one of my early roles, uh, role models that I like to look up to. He SNL. passed away. Yeah, big SNL guy. I actually wanted to be a comedian my whole life, but, um, yeah. you know. Well, when you have a face for radio, <laughs> sometimes uh, you yeah. stick to what you're good at. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So what was your first job? Uh, did you start working in high school? Um, yeah, I started working in high school. My first job, I think, was I worked at a deli for like three months. Uh, it was like this weird gourmet deli in Bayville, and it didn't do well because the clientele really wasn't for gourmet delis in Bayville at the time. <laughs> tell, us, tell us more about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm curious now. Just now you got my attention. You know, a lot of uh, you know expensive cheeses. People really weren't into it, and so it closed down. It was called Corcoran, Corcoran and Wallace, actually, okay. and uh, it closed down um, pretty quickly. And then um, I was a camp counselor. <laughs> I can uh, yeah. see that. I was a camp okay. counselor for a couple of years, like a summer job. Um, they were paying like six and a quarter at the time. And I found out that they hired another girl that like knew one of the directors or something for like six seventy five. dollars Politics, gotcha. Got some politics in there. And I tried to have a mutiny on the deck. And you I unionized the counselor? <laughs> I yeah. unionized the, uh, the camp counselors at about 14 years old. And uh, they found out about that. And I got fired from that job. So. <laughs> Okay, so you got fired twice. <laughs> fired twice, yep. So, th Whoa. so things are not going too good. Record actually. that, record that. One of them went out of business, okay, okay. and the other one was some fire, but okay, we yeah. can keep it going. Due to low sales. <laughs> yeah. I get it. You look like a guy who got bad grades in high school. Absolutely, 100%. True? Yeah, I was probably, I don't know, 205 out of 225 or She's something like that. He's got degrees. No, it wasn't that bad. I was like mid, mid grade, 150 <laughs> out of 225 right. or something. But they did let you graduate, they allegedly. Did. Yeah, allegedly, yeah. And then, so now you're 17, 18, 19. Where do we go from there? Staples. <laughs> yeah, I did a stint at Staples for a couple of years. And then... Um, Hooper Avenue? What's that? Hooper Avenue Staples. Hooper Avenue Staples, yeah. And then I went to uh, Applebee's, which was a... Okay. That's where it really starts to turn. That's where, you know, that's where your neighborhood grill, you know, neighborhood guy, your neighborhood price grill, apps. absolutely crushed it there, just <laughs> murdered it. Um, Was that the one in the mall? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Simon Mall at yeah. the time? Yeah, Simon Mall. Legendary, for sure. I remember you, I think, <laughs> from that mall. Yeah. What year was that? Was that like 02? Uh, yeah, I would say, oh, no, that was even before. No, yeah, 0, 0, 2, 0, 3. Yeah, 03. 
Okay. So your server at Applebee's, do you ever make it to the bar there? No. Or they, they keep you on the floor? No, they keep me on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can get like six entrees for 20 bucks. There. Yeah. And then um, I went to sell cell phones in the mall. Uh, now, a lot of people, that's I'll where your honest, sales experience came you in. You guys right. both look like you still sell cell phones in the mall right now. These outfits are very <laughs> cell phone in the mall outfits. I'm, the hair, everything, very cell phone in the okay. mall. Okay. All right. So. There you go. <laughs> we just sell the rhinestones on the cell phone. We don't actually sell the cell phones. Strictly cases. So uh, I worked at AT&T in the mall for like, I don't know, like uh, three or four years. Um, switched to Point Pleasant, AT&T, same thing. Um, in the midst of doing that, um, there was a kid that was at AT&T that was an entrepreneur himself, and he wanted to um, come up with this business to promote restaurants and bars. And okay. so he had this tent, it was like a, you know those little tabletop tents? Sure. So he had like an idea of like promoting through tabletop tents and people would, I don't know, uh, call a number or something like that and uh, figure something, I don't really know. I really don't even remember it. All I know is that it was promoting bars um, with specials. It was all kinds of specials with okay. the tents and you know, calling a number for a discount and you become a part of this, almost like a Groupon for, with tabletop tents kind of an idea. Right. Terrible idea, probably. Yeah. Obviously, it never came to uh, fruition, but I did go to a couple of places to try and sell this idea. One of the places was the Bamboo Bar. Ooh, Ooh. the famous Bamboo Bar. That's correct. So I had already been going to Bamboo um, every weekend, religiously, right? Sure. And I knew a lot of people. The reason I knew a lot of people is because I went to... Um, Donovan Catholic, formerly Monsignor Donovan, so we'll call it Mondon, because okay. that's what I call it. I went to Mondon, so since I went to Mondon, you know everybody from Tom's River, from Jackson, from Lacey, because yeah. they're all bust from the whole county. Yeah. And I also lived in Bayville, so I knew everybody from Central. So I knew a lot of people. So uh, those guys, uh, the managers of Bamboo knew that. And so, they, because they had seen me, I was coming in all the time, they saw I knew a lot of people, I would come in with a lot of people. So I went in to pitch this tabletop tent special thing, yeah. and uh, they pulled me to the side, and they're like, we, we don't want to do this with you, this is dumb. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Stop the pitch. Yeah, and so, are you looking for a job or are you Yeah, not? and so Brad Bilheimer and, uh, and Brian Hutt, um, they both said, do you, they offered me a job. Nice. And, uh, How old are you at this point? <clears throat> I don't know, 23, 24, 23, um, about 23 or 24. And anyway, from there, it was just bamboo for 10 years strong. And this is like 05 right now? What's that? Uh, probably, oh, yeah, oh, 03, 04, I guess, maybe 05. Yeah. In that, I mean, it's a blur back then. Yeah. So this is peak bamboo now. Peak bamboo. Yeah. I mean, peak bamboo. This is when sure. Seaside Heights was in its prime. Is Karma even open, or this Not is even courtyard? Close. This is courtyard bamboo. Wow. Courtyard wow. bamboo courtyard. is just, you know, we're going kitchen back. bar. Yeah. It was, you know, Kenny Mack was there. Very cool guy. I know he was just on. He's very cool. <laughs> so he was bartending when you were applying for your job. <laughs> he was, but I knew Kenny Mack through several different outlets of partying in high school. Like I said, I knew a lot of Tom's River people. Um, so, you know, I would constantly, constantly see all these kids out. Um, Are you guys the same age? Kenny Mac? Yeah. I think he's a year older than me. He's a little younger than Kenny. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we start our star tender career. Um, that's the glorified bartender and star celebrity. Um, this star is before, tender, that's your, you really love that. I that. just keep coming back to it. Yeah, he does. This is before they made it rain on the star tenders, right? Yeah, exactly. So this is when you're just serving drinks for money. Yeah, this is serving drinks for money, pre-making it rain on dudes, which becomes very weird, but also you don't turn it down because it's money, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. that's post-2012. Absolutely. <laughs> nightlife. We're talking good nightlife. <laughs> Flip phones. Right? Yeah. You're recording videos, maybe, but it's not really saving. Right. There's no social media. Right. There's no social media at this time, really. I don't want to ask MySpace, I guess. MySpace. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We were MySpace. There. MySpace. A huge coder, coding, all kinds of backgrounds and throwing up mims. This is why I'm hot and just crushing life for sure. Did you promote on MySpace? Um, no, I didn't promote on MySpace, uh, but I did. 
when, once Instagram came out, definitely promoted on Instagram early. Yeah. Early on Instagram. Early adopter. Absolutely. Always. Um, Hut wanted me to ask you, he just sent this in. <laughs> Did you ch charge for every drink at Bamboo? Absolutely. You were that Definitely guy. Definitely huh? every time. I every charged time. every drink. You did. I could, I could vouch for every that. Every time. <laughs> okay, good. We got that. That's not the reason we went out of business. That's no, good. no. That was no. definitely Kenny. No, that was... Kenny did not count every drink, people Absolutely. are saying. Absolutely, I charged. No. I, have a I don't think I gave away one free drink. People just came to my bar for one. I was very quick. Right. Two. I was very good looking at the time, so, right. you know, I'm that. still in great shape, you know, but I was even yeah. better looking then, you know. Um, sober behind the bar? Sober. I actually was sober behind yeah. the bar. That's the difference maker. Yeah. So, and I moved so fast, people thought I was on substances, but I was not, actually. Performance enhancing drugs. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was totally, uh, totally sober. Yeah. So then from that bar, you, I've seen you at other bars. Wasn't only bamboo. Yeah, so I guess um, you worked at JRs. I worked at JRs, yes. So I, okay. I worked at JRs for a little bit, but the change came when um, I was going to Jack Jack and Bill's a lot, right? Okay. Um, and uh, DJ Tempo, he had a um, a fundraiser, right? Because he was sick, uh -huh. um, and so Steve, who was the manager of uh, Jack and Bill's asked me, because I knew a lot of people, he brought bartenders from all around the different bars, do you want to do this, um, you know, do you want to do this fundraiser? So I ended up doing a fundraiser for Tempo and at Jack's, and um, it went, you know, well, whatever. We raised a lot of money. I took my tip bucket, just gave it right gave away. It. Yeah, just gave it right away. Right. Steve liked that, thought it was a good gesture. Right. Hired me, and then I started working there. So I was working there the circuit go. of bamboo, Karma on Thursdays, Bamboo on the weekends, Aztec on Monday nights, Jax on Thursday nights, and JR's on Tuesday nights, actually. It was a now you're a professional life. bartender. Wow. Okay. Wow. With, with fat pockets. For, for sure. Probably have arthritis from yeah. that. Yeah. It was, it was, a, six it was a good time. And yeah. Just, yeah. So how long was that run? That's like 2016, something like that? 2016. 20, like between 2014 and, or 2015 and 2017, I guess, or yeah, 2016. So what year do you get the pull aside, like enough's enough? Uh, 2016 was the pull aside, was, which I was like really priming bartending at that point. Um, but uh, my friend Emily was like, you can't do this forever. Right. She's like, if you want to have a family, you can't be yeah. out until four o'clock in the morning. And right. um, you know, if you want to be an adult, uh, which there's still some bartenders that sure. are lifers, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, you know, uh, uh, discounting that whatsoever. But it's tough to walk away from the money. Well, it's tough to walk away from the money. But the other thing is that when you're in that um, limelight, it's tough to just get out of it for the money, like you said. But sure. more importantly, your body, it takes a toll on your body, dude. Like, yeah, you're and right. you're, I mean, my clock still today is like totally fucked up. I'm so wired. you're wired at night, basically. Wired. Dude, I don't go to sleep until 2 o'clock in the morning. My girlfriend's like, what are you I doing? Do that too. Yeah. I get text messages at random yeah. hours of the night. <laughs> yeah, it's sick. Sick. So, um, but yeah, it's, you know, it takes a toll on your body and your mind. And, you know, that's, you know, later on in life, as you get older, <laughs> cardiovascular or whatever you want to say, like, you know, it's just not a good <clears throat> thing. So I get out of that. She pulls me aside. 2016 says get your license. So I go take the test, easy peasy. Um, but I'm one foot in, one foot out. Did you pass the test on the first try? I did pass the test oh. on the first Pressure's try. Pressure's on, Jamie. Yeah. 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 He's got well, a I test didn't. coming up. I got a test coming up, yeah. Oh, that's right. You'll fail, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. just, no, you won't. Pass my just... mortgage test on the first try. <laughs> that's, then you're definitely going to eat. That's easy. It's a joke. Yeah. So we pass the test. Then where do we hang our license? Uh, at Remax, at the time it was LTD. Okay. Um, this was before they became Revolution. Mm -hmm. um, so I hang my um, my license there. And at first it was tough. It was, it's tough. Were you on your own, not on a team at no, first? No, I was on a team, but uh, you know, you take a test, you don't really know. It doesn't, uh. that doesn't give you any experience for anything, right? Right. So like I was going out to showings and I don't know, I didn't know what the fuck I was talking faking about. Faking it until you make it. Faking, faking it until you, you make it. it which, That's you know, it. It's, it there's, there's levels to faking it until you make sure. it, right? Like, you know, I've heard of some people that 
dress up and they really, that wasn't yeah. me. I'm not selling that. I was really trying to learn the business, but I was going out, going out on showings and you know, there's uh, my first showing was a six paddock farm in, um, in uh, Jackson, somewhere out there, right? And I go out there and I just don't know anything about it, a horse a farm. I don't know anything. With a like <laughs> this that. guy comes out and he's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, are these French drains in the basement? And I was like, yeah, French, Asian, they're, you know, they're, they're looking good drains. You know what I mean? And then he comes over and he's like, he's like, over here, he's like, is this where the sump pump is? And like, you'll learn in real estate yeah. if you're starting out. Buyers will usually ask their own, they'll ask a question, they'll answer their own question sometimes if you give them enough time, right? So somebody asks a question, I'll just be silent about it, and he would answer it. But he was like, is this a sump pump? And I was like, yeah, well, it's, a, it's pumping something over let's there. Check I don't it, know. Let's check it out. Oh, yeah. it is a sump pump. <laughs> it's a sump yeah. pump, you know? So I didn't know what a sump pump was, yeah. you know? I didn't know what the French drains were. I didn't know those things. I knew the laws of real estate and what I shouldn't do to get a $10,000 fine from, you know, uh, the real estate commission, but I didn't know anything else, you know? So, um, so yeah, so I, you know, 2016, 2017 was a baby, didn't know much, but I did know a lot of people. And so I was getting b business really even from the beginning, um, because I knew a lot of people. How sure. are you, um, promoting your real estate business like early on? It was tough. I was doing it on Facebook, yeah. right? And because I was one foot in and one foot out with bartending, it was just like, <laughs> you know, fire. like yeah. I'd like yeah. post like a new listing and like there'd be like all these people that are gonna be at my bar like, you fucking loser, you're not gonna sell that house, yeah. dork, you know what I mean? I'd be like, all right, cool, man. You know, <laughs> like I'm trying to be professional. To this guy's it. like, yeah, see you yeah, at the sure. bar, scumbag. <laughs> you know, thanks for charging me for drinks, you fucking piece of shit. I'm like, okay. So, um, so yeah, so that was tough, you know, I had to make that transition. So, um, but once I eventually completely stopped bartending, um, then it started to really roll and it started to compound. No, you so. got the experience in the field. I mean, it took some time, but yeah, yeah, of course. You know, you're a long way from the farm. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah it's, it's gone. I feel like you definitely have to focus on something for it to be great. You know, if you're split too many ways. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I would say there's, you know, many agents in the real estate business that are halfies, right? They're half in, half out, and um, then they'll complain that they're not making money and, you know, whatever it may be, and it's like, you got to be in it to win it, you know? Yeah. If you're not in it to win it, then um, yeah, you're not really going to do well, yeah. What was, like, the turning point for you where you started taking the business more serious? Did you go to a conference? Did you have a different mentor? Like Yeah, I mean, I have great mentors. The the three broker owners that I work for, they're the best, you know? They're uh, good guys. super yeah. good guys, you know? Um, like I said, I was originally at Remax LTD. That broker, not so great, weirdo. So we had to, we switched from that brokerage and they made their own brokerage. Cool. Um, and you know, I went and joined with them and they're like cutting edge of the technology. They're really about agent, you know, they're agent focused. The other brokerage that we were with, with that we split away from, they weren't so agent focused, you know? Um, so I end up going with them. They've taught me a lot, you know, and each one of them has like a different. What year was this when the, probably, when they separated? I think it was like 19, maybe. Well, it's five, we just had our five year anniversary. So I don't know, five years from now. Yeah. 19 about, um, but yeah, it really took a turn when um, I picked up investors. Investors and the time in the business took a turn. So, you know, your first two years, you sell a couple houses, this and that, whatever. But then those people that you sold houses to, those first two or three years, right? Now they grow out of that house. Now they need to sell and buy. Maybe they have their cousins. Now you have investors. And then it all starts to just compound. And How then it gets crazy. How did you meet the investors? Was that through the bar yeah. scene? Actually, um, uh, my biggest investor that I met was through a good friend, my, my buddy Jimmy. And so I was showing him houses, right? Cause he wanted to buy. And I showed him like a lot of houses. I think it was like 15, 20 houses, something like that at the time. And he ends up not buying, right? So he's like, he's like, ah, I'm not gonna wait, like whatever. I'm like, you motherfucker. So, um, you know, whatever, you yeah. know, it is what it is. Sure. That's the name part of the game. game. That's part, part of the game. game, right? So, but you know, you know, what goes around comes around, right? So he calls me probably, but he knows how hard I worked for him. So he calls me like, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe six months later or something like that. And he's like, yo, he's like, I got this, uh, this investor. Uh, 
that you know we flip houses with because he, he's a contractor. Yeah. He's like, oh, he's like, I have this investor, and uh, he doesn't like the realtor that is working for him. She's not hungry enough. She's not doing open houses, this and that. And I'm fully out of bartending at this point, yeah. and I'm like super hungry. You know, I'll do anything. So he hooks me up with him. We flip one house, goes well, like really well. And then flip another, and then just another and another, and then I build my relationship with that investor, and then that investor, um, you know, we take off and we're crushing it, and then I'm posting everything on Instagram. Another investor slides into my DMs via Instagram, and he's like, "Hey, I like all your stuff. You know, I like your, you know, your videos that you're doing and stuff." And then, how you know, do you find kind of- deals for your investor? Because they usually have to buy it below market. It depends. Uh, at the time when we were flipping, like 20, 21, whatever. Um, there was so many, you know, houses, especially where we set our yeah. foot in Holiday the City, right? The inventory thick, yeah. was, was, was pretty good. Um, but a lot of times it's off market, you know, so you got to work with wholesalers and, you know. Wholesa- the wholesalers are calling you because they know well, you do I get it. on their lists or whatever, you know, okay. but. Uh, Talk about the mechanics of dealing with a wholesaler because there's no commission. Right? No. It's just like the, you're well, just you build the commission the in. You could build the commission in on your, deal, right? you could build a so. commission in on the buy side if I wanted to. I could build that in. Um, but you just want the listing. I just want it because I'm going to flip it with the investor, you know? Um, How many of those are you doing a year? Uh, wholesales? Uh, not that many. I, you know, I really like to find um, margins within properties that have been sitting on the market, right? There's a there's a decent amount of them that are on the market. You say, okay, well, this has been on the market, let's say, 60 days, right? What area is it in? Um, you know, why is it sitting on the market? Is there some meat on the bone there to, you know, acquire the property for X, fix it up for X, and sell it for X? You know, um, so get a couple of those. Um, yeah. We're not doing any buy and holds. Um, I have a couple of, of uh, investors that do buy and holds for like cap rates and stuff like that. Okay. I have about five or six investors. Four of them are, um, you know, quick, quick flip, and then yeah. two of them are, are uh, buy and hold guys. So is there like a set model that you follow when you're looking no. at a house to fix and flip, or it's? I mean, it's just carte. where's the it's a la carte. Where's you know it's per case basis. You know, is there meat on the bone? You know, can we acquire it for a, a good price? You know, let's say it's listed for two twenty five. Right? Can I get it for 190? Is it possible? If I tell them I can close in five to seven days cash, yeah. you know, okay, cool, right? And then, so I just made what on the back end, because we know it was already market value, you know, right. as is right. for 225, but they gave it to me for 190, you know? So then how much can we cut costs on the reno? And I don't mean cut costs, but I mean, you know, get the labor down and get the Let materials assume, yeah, down, you know, we're like, buying in bulk, whatever it may be. Right. So, um, we get that number down, and then you know how much can we eventually resell for? So it's, you know, I just did one um, in Lacey, acquired it for 185. We put 60 into it, and we sold it for 385. Yeah, wow, it's great margin. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a home run. Yeah, 100 percent. Sure. Yeah. What percent of your business is uh, investors and flips like that? <sighs> Probably 40 or 50. You know, I have a pretty balanced business. I've never made a cold call my whole career. Wow. Not once. What's the biggest mistake you see buyers or sellers of real estate making over and over again? Sellers make a lot of mistakes and buyers make a lot of, and they're different, right? right. Um, so I think buyers' biggest mistake is waiting right now. There's a lot of buyers that wait. You know, if you agree. Think, if you th- he probably knows from being a lender. Sure. Um, and I'm not, listen, I'm not at all trying to push, hey, this is the perfect time to like, get out there and buy. Like, I'm not that guy. That's totally corny to me. But for sure, if you look at the market year over year, if you bought in 20 and 21, when, you know, your uncle that can't even balance a checkbook told you not to buy, right? Because the market's going to go down and it's going to crash and this and that. Well, you'd be sitting on 100 and, you know, 50, 200 in equity sure. for most homes, right? Most homes are sitting on at least 100 in equity. So um, I think that's the biggest mistake is buyers not just getting into the market. Trying to time the market. Or trying to time, well, time the market. All the same with the values uh, that have gone up so high and the shortage of inventory. Right. If interest rates come down, we're still going to have that shortage. 
you would think that's going to drive prices up. Up again, yeah. And you so know. personally, where I think the market goes, I think we're probably going to end up somewhere like, you know, California. You know, I just, we're like yeah. their little brother anyway. You know, New Jersey wants to be California so bad, so, uh, or New York, whatever it may be. So um, I think that's where we're going in, in, in regard to prices. If you go to California right now, you look at a, you know, a three bed, two bath, 1,200 square foot home, they're like 1.2, 1.4 million, million dollars, right. you know what I mean? So if you look at, you know, those same specs here in New Jersey, well, let's just take our area, Ocean County, you know, that used to be acquired for 250, 300. It's like almost $500,000 now for a three, two, you know, it's yeah, sick, yeah, yeah. but, and it's just going to keep going up. Like he said, when the interest rates go down again and they have to go down, that's going to drive prices up because there's a million buyers that are going to enter the market. Right. right. And so, um, so yeah, I think that's the biggest mistake for um, buyers. Um, sellers, sellers just make mistakes every time. <laughs> they just, <laughs> yeah. you know, they think their house is worth a million dollars or whatever it is, and you know, it's you know, the bottom line is your house is worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. That's that's, you know, truly what it is. You know, so I get a, all these sellers that say my house is worth this or my house is worth that. So listen, yeah. dude, I'll list your house for $2 million. I do not give a shit, right? Yeah. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna piss money into the marketing, right? I'm gonna put a lot of money into the marketing, yeah. okay? Yeah. More than any other agent, okay? That's why I do videos. I was doing videos on $200,000 houses, yeah. right? And people are like, you're crazy, you know? Why do you do that? And I'm like, well. You find you're getting a lot of uh, attraction from those videos where you, Absolutely. you've got just, new yeah. business just from posting those videos. Question, right? But that's the reason I did it. Sure. But Going back to the point, I'll, you know, put, uh, I'll do videos, I'll do 3D floor plan, I'll do drone, I'll do every single thing there is to do, right? That way, when the house doesn't sell for what you think it should sell for, this is if I disagree with the price point of itself, yeah. then I can go, well, it's not me, because you're not gonna go out and get somebody else that's gonna do better marketing. You're gonna go out, you, some of these agents are taking pictures with their Razor fucking cell phones, you know what I mean? Like a Blackberry, you're like, what is this? This guy's getting paid thousands of dollars. His photos look like shit. Couldn't even spend $150 on photos, you know? So, um, so I do that so I can go back to them and say, well, it's not me, it's definitely the price, right? right. That's and why so, like before we talk about price with sellers, we always talk about pricing strategy first. Right. So it's like, not, not what the house is worth, Let's go over what pricing strategy is. Sure. Event-based pricing, market pricing, and aspirational pricing. Like, right. here's the risks of all. Here's the benefits of all three. Yeah, absolutely. Which one works best for you? Yeah, I mean, you so sound once they agree, way better than me when you when you're saying that. That's not how I speak to the sellers. That's very professional. Everybody's got their own. I'm angle. like, listen, if you fucking sell for this, or you don't sell for that. I don't know what to do. You know, yeah. like that's just. I that's do real me. estate near Princeton, so I got to talk in yeah. a different way. Right. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We got some Ivy Leaguers over there. So, but once they agree on the strategy, then you'd be like, all right, now let's look at the data, you right. know? So the data points to this if you want this strategy. Yeah, sure. Um, and also, as far as the buyer stuff, I think what's not talked about enough is the, the birth rate in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. It's sure. very high. So we have a ton of buyers right. going headlong, head first into no inventory. Right, right. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, for the yeah. foreseeable future right. too. Right. You know, that's why Where I, they I'm, going? I'm like, dude, it's not going to get any better. And you know, it's not like no. you know, even with building materials through the roof is expensive as hell to you know to build stuff. So all these builders are out there. They're not you know crazy you know building new construction yeah. because it's expensive. You know, the margins are not as good as they used to be. So that's not going to help the inventory either. And people migrate to where jobs and the economy's good. Sure. Happens to be good in the tri-state area. Right. PA, New York, New Jersey. Right. You know, there's tons of new construction in Wisconsin. Right. You know, but right. are the jobs that people want there, right. yeah. you know, or, or Texas or whatever. Um, a lot of people from California are coming this way. Right. You know, because the jobs are better here in Silicon Valley. You know, people worse. are leaving the city, too, as well. Yeah. Well, California just sucks in general, so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. He said it. Good. Yep. All right. I'm glad Any you said referrals it. from Speaking. California? <laughs> Send them to uh, me or Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Left coast, what up? So I guess finally, you know, what drives you to keep going and why do you do what you do? I mean, I love what I do. So, and I think it's kind of funny because there's a lot of real estate agents in New Jersey, right? It's just like yeah, very 10,000 or something. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a lot. Or maybe 60,000. Am I wrong with that? Maybe 10,000 and just, it's a lot. I think it's 60,000 or something. But it's funny because 
uh, out of all the agents, I don't find many that really, really love people. And I love people. And it's like, it, there's a lot of it's agents of that business. I come across and it's like, dude, why are you even an agent? You know what I mean? Like, why are you even in real estate? You're like miserable as hell, like to deal with, uh, you know, yeah. from professionally or whatever. So um, I do it because I love it. I love people. I love making new relationships. I think that's probably why my business is, you know, pretty decent yeah. is because I'm constantly building new business. I walk into a room, I want to know everybody and be their friend. Yeah. You know, true story, yeah. you know, except you guys, I hate you guys, but yeah, everybody see. else. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I do it because I love gonna it. You're still going to call me though. Absolutely. I'm going to call. <laughs> I need a loan. It's a relationship <laughs> business. Jamie's the best, bro. I, I call Jamie with the worst loans. I'm oh, like, yeah, he does. 540 credit score, yeah. Jason mask. Get this <laughs> guy, mask. get this guy alone. <laughs> He's like lost their job house yesterday. Is with, house is filled with mold. House yeah, is filled with I remember that call. Called me one time with a client. He said, there's mold everywhere, James. He's like, we're definitely not going to pass inspection, but I really need your help. Where do we stand? And I said, in a very moldy spot, from what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah I got it closed. He got it closed. He did. We got it closed. We always get the job done. Yeah, he's good. It's all about getting to the finish line. That's right. This business. Um, well... Kyle, thanks for yeah. coming out. My Good guys. to hear your story. Yeah. Uh, we're impressed uh, with all that you do. Thank you so much, fellas. Thank you. Wait, don't go anywhere. We've got another interview coming up next. Wait for this one.